All right, so there's some cows down there. I'm trying really hard to make a video that mimics what I've been trying to teach you, which is to get Gus to choose you over the things that make him, you know, so so curious or so interested that it's more important than staying in a heel with you or listening to your commands. I've got my speaker box paired up. Let's see if we can get him. Sit. To give you an example. So when I go next to these cows, I'm going to watch him. Let's go and see what he does. You know, what kind of choices he makes. So his brain huh, is trying to eat grass, not go to the cow. Got that. Watching how his brain veers over to try and eat this long grass that's behind the fence. So if you really look at his head, it starts to go in that direction. I don't have a lot of room in here, but he's headed that way and I'm headed straight. So if you notice what I did is I backed up and called him back to me as to say, hey, you know, get out of that pre-drive and, and back into pack drive and walk next to me. So I'm going to start walking again. I'm going to watch his brain. Which direction is it headed? with their nervousness by showing them that if they're with us and next to us that we'll take care of whatever might be scary to them and they can just relax and hang out with us. So that's the beauty of having an opportunity like this and instead of like oh my god why are you barking or oh no gosh no it's hey why don't you create some more distance where you're a little more comfortable and observe this um, in a more neutral and curious way instead of in, a, in an aroused, over adrenalized, nervous way, right? So I'm gonna walk towards the cows again and I'm just gonna kind of observe, is his brain sticking with me or is it headed towards the cows? If, I started heading, if it starts to head towards the cows, then I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna either do a recall or a let's go to remove him and, and help and start all over again to show him no, what I want is for you to walk with me. I don't want you to run towards the cows. So that's what we're trying to say to him. That's the message we're trying to deliver. I want you to stay with me. I don't want you to run at the cows. So if you run to the cows, I have to start over again so I can repaint the picture that I'm looking for. I need to show the brain what it is that I'm looking for. I can't just pull or tug or just walk through it because that won't teach him anything. And, if it, and it might actually make him a lot more nervous. Right, so I'm going to start going. Let's go. So this is all prey drive. When his head, when his head perches up like that and his ears flare out, his forehead scrunches up a little bit. Now he's air sensing. Trying to tell you, it's midweek, is that when they're in prey drive, you know, 
don't want our dogs to run at those things. We want them to be curious, but we don't want them to run at them. So that's why we're trying to deliver that message of, no, you need to stay with me. But we need to, we need to utilize, uh, or basically, what would, I would encourage you guys to learn is the body language, you know, the ears erect, the forehead scrunched up, even sometimes the air sensing can send him forward, you know, a raised head. He always starts walking towards the stimulus when he's in that state of mind. Not always, he's better. But with you guys initially, he probably will be. And so this is how you're gonna to wanna to handle it because again, that conversation is, I need you to walk by these things with me. And we need to paint that picture until he gets it, until it's become clear what he's supposed to do when he walks by these types of things. So we got some curiosity here. Okay, now, the, now look, the body is automatically heading towards it. Can somebody pull him back? Oh, that's fine. <coughs> that's nervousness. <coughs> That means that he's not as nervous about it. But what you're going to notice is how quickly I noticed his body language. And you might not be able to see it very well in this video. Um, but at least you can see the motions that I do. And we can work on showing you the body language more as we go. But I'm really quick about backing up when I can tell he's going to veer off. And the, you're going to get better at it as you go, because the quicker you are about reading it and redirecting it, the faster he'll overcome it. So she's not going to stay in that negative mindset for too long um, before, uh, before realizing basically what will get him to move forward. So, which a lot of what he's doing is not negative, you know, this is general curiosity, but I need to use... Uh, you know, this is good from the nervous factor and just using something that lures him out um, to show you how to handle, you know, that, that type of a situation.
water stayed on. And then the sound changed at a certain point. That was the e-collar the entire time. The reason why the e-collar was on, sit down. The reason why the e-collar was on the entire time is because he wasn't responsive to it. And so I need to continue to apply the pressure until he releases it by committing to me, right? I need to see the, that the e-collar turns off when he turns back around and heads my direction, but it doesn't turn off until I get that. And that's, he's got to turn that pressure off. And I was going up a little bit at a time, giving him a few seconds to kind of see if I could, he could feel it. And it, until he, it was like a, it, that, that sound change indicated that I was going up higher on my e-collar. So I probably, I was hoping to walk all the way by it because I knew I could with him. He's really good. He usually only takes about one session to get over things. But they all moved over there, so I don't, I don't see it being challenging at all, all for him to just walk down this hallway. But we'll go ahead and do it. End on a good note. Hey, I didn't shake it up. Sit. on the ground to smell things, right? So I'm just kind of testing him to see, you know, can you, are you going to look back up at me or are you going to, that you're going to wander off and continue to smell, right? So that's another example of just, just observing the brain. I'm not saying that Gus should never have an opportunity to smell things. That's just because we're, do, we're setting it up this way as to say, um, you know, basically the whole premise of this video is where's the brain at and how sit how can we you know maintain that focus on the human so he's working right now right I'm gonna have I have times where he's in a free command and can run around and sniff so I'm not saying 
stay here. If he's mentally, he's freed. So um, just wanted to make that distinction because you know, you might, I don't want you to be saying to yourself, so I'm not supposed to let my dog smell. It's like, no, we're trying, we're practicing the working session of choose me over everything. We can free him to go smell, you know, uh, in different areas of the day, but it's not this session. So when you saw me stop, Gus, sit. You need to work on our sit, stay, and grasp. It's not very good. Um, so, and you saw me in the video stop, and there was no um, command or e caller speaker box. That was because I was giving him an opportunity to make a choice. So I'm stopping, but I'm giving him a little, you know, giving him a couple seconds to see where he's going to go. Are you going to wander off or are you uh, going to choose to stay next to me? And every time I, um, most of the time he chose to come, come back to me on his own and just go into that heel position. Um, but in the times that he didn't, here, here. And the times that he didn't, sit. Trying to, he keeps trying to lean on me and like sit on my feet. So this is what I'm using my body for. It's something that you should definitely practice because you know, this guy is kind of mouthy and globby and he has some personal space and boundary issues, you know? Um, but uh, if he, you know, if I can tell that he's not gonna back up and do it all on his own, then yes, I, I do direct him. So I'm just gonna do one more there and back. Let's go. much smoother that one was you know like even after the cows left I had to do some long line work down that hallway um, and then you know that last one I only had to use my e-collar a couple times to remind him what he's supposed to be doing so and there actually one of them was a leave it sit because he was trying to put a stick in his mouth and the other one was a because he veered out to go investigate something. So, um, you know, this is a great example of how to pay attention to the brain, you know, back up when you see that he's, you know, bail on him when you see that he's bailed on you, recall him or let's go him, and just continue to work him through. And as I really set it up like a straight line, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth just to continue to kind of press into him what it is that we're looking for, but also sit. Can you go potty? Go potty. Try and press into him what it is that we're looking for um, and paint that picture that I'm looking for, you know, of choosing me over everything. Um, so hopefully that kind of clears up what we were trying to do with Owen the other day when he and I were making lots of noise and being goofballs. This is what I was trying to get at, was if you pay attention to the brain and redirect it over and over and over again, you can walk by that chaos and he's going to ignore it. And this is something I would highly, I would highly advise you practice on a daily basis because you have a lot of, he gets worked up about stuff and then you know, uh, having a kid in the house just kind of creates a whole nother layer of training because their energy is so 
intense and different than an adult's that it's more work. So do it, let Owen help you with this, you know, make noise, squirm around, um, bring a neighbor dog over if you can, go find a fence line that makes them upset, ask friends if they'll stand there for you while you do it, um, and just continue to kind of press into him that, who, you know, when someone's walking him that he needs to stay with you um, and choose you over everything uh it'll help if you if you kind of set it up on a regular basis with things that would normally upset him the training will go by faster and you're going to have a dog with really solid impulse control that you really and truly won't have to manage for the rest of his life because we're ingraining in him how we want him to be so i hope that helped thanks for your time